Good afternoon. My name is June Kim. I'm the Acting United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Today, we announce charges of fraud and corruption in the world of college basketball. The picture painted by the charges brought today is not a pretty one. Coaches at some of the nation's top programs soliciting and accepting cash bribes. Managers and financial advisors circling blue chip prospects like coyotes. And employees of one of the world's largest sportswear companies secretly funneling cash to the families of high school recruits. In all, we have charged 10 people in three separate complaints. Four college basketball coaches, three people associated with professional managers and advisors, and three with ties to the major sportswear company, including its global marketing director for basketball. These men allegedly participated in two different, two different but related schemes. In the first, college coaches took cash bribes from managers and advisors in exchange for directing players and their families to those bribers. In the second scheme, managers, advisors, and those affiliated with the sportswear company worked together to funnel money to families of some of the country's top high school recruits, upwards of $100,000, for the player's commitment to play for the schools sponsored by that company. Let me start with some details about the first scheme. We have charged four college basketball coaches, Chuck Person, Lamont Evans, Emmanuel Richardson, and Anthony Bland. They are all associate or assistant coaches at major Division I schools with top tier basketball programs. They have all been in and around the game of basketball for a long time. And one, Chuck Person, played and coached in the NBA. All of them had the trust of the young players they coached and recruited. Young men who looked up to them and believed that the coaches had their best interest at heart. Chuck Person, in describing his influence over one of his players, put it this way, quote, he listens to one person, that is me. Chuck Person also explained that his players trusted and looked up to him because, as he reminded them, he had coached Kobe Bryant and had worked for Phil Jackson. But as alleged, these coaches abused that trust placed in them by the players and their families. And they violated the duties that they owed to their schools. In exchange for bribes ranging from $13,000 to almost $100,000 each, these coaches allegedly pushed particular managers and advisors on the players and their families. And certain of the coaches arranged for separate payments to be made to the families as well. Anthony Bland described what he could do for the managers and advisors this way, quote, I can definitely mold the players and put them in the lap of you guys. The professionals whose lap the corrupt coaches put their players in were the defendants. Christian Dawkins, Munish Sood, and Rashawn Michel. Dawkins was an athlete recruiter for a sports agency who was trying to start his own sports management business. Sood was an investment advisor, and Michelle owned a company that sold suits and other high-end clothing to professional athletes. For these men, bribing coaches was a business investment. They knew that the corrupt coaches, in return for bribes, would pressure the players to use their services. And they also knew that if and when those young players turned pro, that would mean big bucks for them in professional fees and profits. As, Daw as Dawkins put it during a meeting that was recorded by law enforcement, quote, if we take care of everybody, we control everything, you can make millions off of one kid. While pushing these professionals, the bribe coaches showed little regard for the players' well-being. They ignored red flags, seeing only the green of the cash bribes flowing their way. For example, in steering players to, to a financial advisor 
who it turned out was actually cooperating with the government, most of the coaches never asked the advisor a single question about his qualifications, his track record in handling players' money, or really anything else about his business. A simple Google search by the coaches of the advisor's name would have revealed that the SEC had brought securities fraud charges against him just last year, including for misusing his professional athlete client's money. Similarly, with Christian Dawkins, none of the, none of the coaches warned the players or their families that Dawkins had lost, had lost his job at a sports management company after an NBA Players Association investigation revealed that he had misused his client's credit cards credit card to pay tens of thousands in unauthorized purchases. But it wasn't just that the bribe-taking coaches ignored red flags and didn't seem to care about the qualifications of the advisors. As alleged, the coaches affirmatively lied to the players and their families. In talking to the families, they built up these professionals, some of whom they barely knew, with bald-faced lies. Chuck Person claimed that one of them was his own personal advisor and a financial advisor to Hall of Fame basketball player Charles Barkley. Well, that wasn't true. That advisor, the same one who was cooperating with the government, had never even met Charles Barkley and had never handled Chuck Person's money other than paying him cash bribes. Chuck Person also assured a player's mother that he himself had not received a penny for promoting that advisor to her. That was a lie, too. That conversation took place five days after Person had taken an envelope filled with 15000 in cash from that very advisor during a secret meeting in a Manhattan hotel room. By allegedly accepting bribes in this way, these four coaches not only breached their obligations to their schools, violated NCAA rules, and betrayed the trust of their players, they also committed serious federal crimes, as did the managers and advisors who paid them. The second scheme, although slightly different, came from the same playbook of fraud and corruption. In this scheme, Dawkins and Sood, again, worked with three people with ties to a major global sportswear company to send bribe money to the families of some of the country's top high school recruits. The three men are James Gatto, the global marketing director for basketball at the sportswear company, Merle Code, a business affiliate of the same sportswear company, and Jonathan Brad Augustine, the program director for an amateur basketball team sponsored by that company. The complaint alleges that these defendants conspired to secretly funnel six-figure payments to the families of three high school players. In exchange, the players would agree to commit to playing basketball at two colleges that were sponsored by that company and eventually retain the advisory services of Dawkins and Sood and to being sponsored by that sportswear company. Recognizing the illicit nature of these payments, Gatto and Code allegedly took steps to hide them. Instead of paying the families directly, they made the payments through Dawkins' company and Augustine's amateur basketball team. They also conspired to disguise the payments in the company's books by using fake invoices and false entries. As Merle Code put it in another recorded call, quote, it's on the books, but it's not on the books for what it's actually for, close quote. As alleged, the charge defendants claim that the payments to the players and their families were made in coordination with the coaches at the two colleges sponsored by that company. Now, if you read the detailed allegations in the three complaints, totaling over 100 pages, you will find yourselves in the dark underbelly of college basketball. We were able to get into that world through a cooperating witness and two undercover agents posing as corrupt advisors and financial backers. And we obtained numerous court-authorized wiretaps and made hundreds of consensual recordings. Through these recordings, we were able to hear, in the defendant's own words, their audacious, allegedly criminal schemes. And I'm going to quote uh, a couple of them. As Dawkins put it in one recording, quote, if you're going to fund these 
those kind of guys, referring to the coaches at the most elite programs, Dawkins said, quote, I mean, we'd be running college basketball, close quote. In, in another recorded conversation with the FBI undercover, Dawkins explained that what they were doing, funneling money to players' families, could, quote, not be completed, completely accounted for on paper because some of it is, whatever you want to call it, illegal, close quote. He was right. That is what we call it, illegal. So let me walk uh, you through some of these <coughs> visuals you have here. These two charts uh, uh, or diagrams show the two different schemes uh, in a picture format. So this one shows the coaches. This is the alleged coaches bribery scheme. These are the managers and advisors who paid the bribes to these coaches who in turn pressured players uh, to go uh, to use these managers once they turned pro. And if some of the college coaches are alleged to have uh, funneled some of the bribes to the players and their families. This depicts the uh, alleged sportswear company fraud scheme that has uh, the company affiliates and the managers and advisors paying cash to families, players and their families, some of them directed uh, according to them by the coaches. And in exchange, the players and families would commit to uh, Division I schools. Uh, and they would file false certifications about their amateur status and receive athletic scholarships in return. And these were schools that were sponsored by that company. This investigation has required the dedication, hard work, and skill of many, many people. And I want to recognize some of them. First, I want to thank our great partners at the FBI, represented here today by Assistant Director in Charge Bill Sweeney, Special Agent in Charge Mike McGarity, and Assistant Special Agent in Charge George Kuzami. We thank them and the many terrific agents in the New York field office who worked tire tirelessly on this investigation. We also thank the agents around the country who helped execute the arrests last night and this morning. We do so many of our important, our most important groundbreaking, groundbreaking cases with the FBI, and this is certainly one of them. Second, I want to thank the career prosecutors and investigators in our office who have worked relentlessly and masterfully on this case. They are Assistant United States Attorneys Robert Boone, Ted Discant, Noah Solowaychik, and Alini Floater, as well as Tatiana Martins and Russell Capone, the Chief and Deputy Chief of our Public Corruption Unit. And I also want to recognize the criminal investigators in our office, and in particular Laval Jackson, for all of his work. For the defendant's charge today, the madness of college basketball went well beyond the big dance in March. Month after month, the defendants exploited the hoop dreams of student athletes around the country, allegedly treating them as little more than opportunities to enrich themselves through bribery and fraud schemes. Fraud, abuse, and corruption of the type alleged in the charges brought today contaminates all that is good and pure around it, and it has no place in college sports. <clears throat> the defendant's alleged conduct not only sullied the spirit of amateur athletics, but it showed contempt for the thousands of players and coaches who follow the rules and play the game the right way. And as many of them hit the hardwood floors later this week for college basketball's first official day of practice, we hope that these charges and arrests will help keep the sport that they love clean and honest. Thank you. I'd like to bring to the podium now uh, Bill Sweeney. Uh, assistant Director in Charge of uh, the FBI's New York Field Office. Thank you, June, and thanks to your team who's on my right, and thanks to Mike and George for your leadership in the investigation, to all the agents, for the forensic accountants, and the countless agents around the country who helped us execute the arrest this morning. Those charged today include athletics industry consultants, a financial advisor, an executive of major international athletics apparel company, and several coaches from both public and private universities, as well as high school level AAU. Coaches have a significant influence over their players. And with that influence comes the responsibility to guide these young athletes in the right direction. As alleged, however, 
The coaches charged today cast aside that responsibility, choosing instead to use their influence to benefit themselves without regard to the players' own genuine interests. All of those charged today contributed to a pay-to-play culture that has no business in college basketball. Today's arrest should serve as a warning to others choosing to conduct business this way in the world of college athletics. We have your playbook. Our investigation is ongoing and we are conducting additional interviews as I speak. We have a lot more work to do and I encourage those who wish to proactively provide information to contact us through our tip line at 212-384-2135. Thank you. I'll take some questions. Um, so you have two questions. One is how pervasive do I think it is, and uh, who's the victim? Um, on the pervasiveness, um, you know, the ch I'm not going to comment beyond what we've charged, but there's a lot there, as you can see. It's 100 plus pages of allegations. Ten people have been arrested. Four coaches at major top tier basketball programs. So um, that's a, a significant number of people uh, and conduct that. Um, uh, that affects a number of important programs. So, you know, the investigation, as Bill said, is ongoing. This is, um, it's now overt, obviously. It was covert until today. Uh, and we will continue to be investigating. So we'll see how pervasive it is. Um, on the question of who's the victim, um, it's, it's clear that in, in this uh, scheme, for example, there are false statements being made to the colleges uh, saying, and th those were generated by the professional managers, people working at the sports apparel company, saying, um, you know, we're going to give you money, you should commit to this school, and yet they, they make false certifications to the school saying that they are um, amateur athletes and have not been paid. So uh, uh, the schools are, in, in a way, the victim. The schools are also a victim uh, where they have hired uh, college coaches who are taking bribes, uh, cash bribes, from managers and advisors to direct players who are entrusted in their care to certain professional advisors. Um, the schools are also, a number of them are public schools, and, uh, and they are all schools that receive uh, money, federal funded money. And so uh, to the extent the bribery, the bribery laws prohibit, the federal laws prohibit those who, who work for public institutions or institutions that receive public money from taking bribes. And I think all of us, the public, uh, anyone who plays in the game, uh, are victims of that type of conduct. I'm wondering if, uh, what kind of cooperation you've had with the NCAA up until this point, and what, and what kind of discussions do you have from, from, from here on? Uh, the investigation was covert until this morning. So uh, we have reached out to the NCAA, and we will be working and talking to them until today. Uh, I don't believe they were aware of this investigation. You've established a, uh, a special phone number in this case. What's your message to people that are in, in the programs and the reference of your charging documents today? And what's your message to people maybe in other programs about what you want to have them talk forward about and, and your message to them maybe cooperate with Yeah, the message to them uh, along the lines of what uh, Bill Sweeney said is if you or someone who engaged in this type of conduct or you are aware of others who have engaged in this kind of type of conduct, call, call us. Call the FBI hotline number that's on our press release or our office uh, and tell us about it. Um, if you're someone who yourself engaged in some of this conduct, uh, I'd also encourage you to call us uh, because I think uh, it's better for you to call us than us to be calling you when we're ready to charge you. June, uh, not too long ago when uh, your predecessor was, uh, Pete Barr was up there talking about uh, the Albany on trial, the Albany corruption cases, he mentioned that uh, beyond prosecution, there needed to be a cultural change in Albany. I'm wondering if there's some sort of analog here with the NCAA um, beyond this kind of 
uh, shot across the bow that this prosecution represents. Uh, is there anything the league can do that needs to happen otherwise? Um, as I said, we haven't been in communication with the NCAA until today. Um, so this, the message of this case is that we have uncovered the conduct that we've alleged in this complaint. It is serious. They are federal crimes, and it involves a number of important programs and important uh, uh, coaches. And the message is, if it is pervasive, then people should be looking at it. And you know, I'm not going to comment much more on what the NCAA should or could do. Uh, we speak uh, through our charges, and I think the charges speak pretty loudly. Would you say that it's fair to say that the charges hinge on those NCAA rules? And secondarily, is that used in telling what the NCAA to do? Was it important to you beyond the fact that because of NCAA rules, it was false certifications? And certainly what you just said, you've kind of spoken independently of the importance of amateurism in college sports. Do you guys take a position that it's important that college sports be amateur? Um, let me take that last part first. I'm not, we're not taking, we're a prosecutor's office. We're not taking a position on what's good for uh, amateur sports or things of that nature. What we do take a position on is if you violate the law, we're going to investigate it and prosecute you. Um, so the question about um, whether, um, you know, we're not, we're not here to regulate uh, uh, college basketball, but if we find that you're engaged in conduct where you're violating, for example, in the charges that we have brought, um, wire fraud uh, statutes, uh, the Travel Act, bribery statutes, then you will be prosecuted. So for those who couldn't hear the question, the question was, uh, how did we get involved and how we start this case? And you should know that I'm not going to answer that. I might answer some of it. I think in the complaint, uh, we do allege that a, a, a cooperating witness who I've mentioned uh, was charged by the SEC, that he became a cooperating witness after being charged by the SEC. And then he had in the past engaged in this type of conduct and said, I'm aware of people who are willing to do this and then he was inserted. And so that's, that's in the public documents. Is there any evidence that uh, the players who were pushed to your cooperator or to Dawkins, I think the one who was charged with the credit card fraud, or fired for credit card fraud, any evidence that those players have been defrauded or ripped off in any way by these managers? Uh, the, we don't, there, there is no allegation in the complaints that I'm aware of of the players that are uh, described in the complaints being ripped off uh, by these defendants, other than being told all the lies that I uh, referenced and being told that they're being sent towards certain advisors uh, because they thought it was in their best interest when, in fact, they were just getting bribes. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did any officials at the – well, there are a number of coaches who have been charged. Uh, oh, higher. There are no allegations of uh, – in the complaint of administrators uh, participating in the, in the bribery. Okay, so for the sportswear company, um, uh, we don't, we haven't named uh, the company or any particular school in our charging documents. That's what we generally do. We don't name individuals or entities that are not charged. That being said, uh, uh, the internet's an amazing thing. You 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 search these folks, you know where they work. Um, so, uh, one of the defendants who is charged is himself quite senior in the company. Uh, he's the global I believe that the title was the global director of basketball or marketing, global marketing director for basketball. So uh, that, in our view, is a pretty serious and senior position. It's clearly someone who had uh, the authority, as alleged in the complaint, to funnel company money upwards of $100,000 and also uh, book it in certain ways that would disguise them. 
but there are no other allegations in the complaint of more senior people at that company. Last question. Did you see the, the reaction to the, um, the conviction being overturned for Dean Skelos? Yeah, um, you know, we, we issued a statement uh, just before coming down. Um, you know, we're still assessing our appellate options, but um, we, we, we look forward to retrying uh, Dean Skelos and Adam Skelos. Um, the, the reversal, if you read the decision, makes clear that the evidence that we presented at trial was more than sufficient to prove their guilt under any standard, even under the new McDonnell standard. Um, but because McDonnell came out after and the jury instruction at the time didn't obviously reflect what was later to be the language in the McDonnell decision, the Second Circuit reversed it and sent it back for a retrial. Um, as I said in the statement, we look forward to a retrial and again uh, uh, presenting that evidence to a jury of New Yorkers and giving the public what they deserve, we think, in that case, which, uh, the justice that they deserve. Look, we can see from this case and all you know, the work that went into this, um, cleaning up corruption is difficult work. Um, it's certainly difficult in, uh, uh, in New York State government, uh, but we're here uh, and these folks standing here uh, are here to do what we can uh, to make sure that uh, our government is clean and honest. And how confident are you to um, get another conviction? We're pretty confident. How are you going to change your strategy in light of the McDonald's? <laughs>